I'm Justin Marquis, and I'm here to talk to you today about developing your technological literacy and becoming a better student. So as Arthur C. Clarke once said, any technology, when sufficiently advanced, becomes indistinguishable from magic. That said, it's my virtual whiteboard. What we're going to talk to you today about is web curation tools. These are a group of tools that allow you to collect resources as you surf the internet and then refer back to them later, share them with your peers or professors, uh, and just basically keep a great record of things you found interesting online that you might need in the future. So some of the most common ones, of course, the one of the oldest is Delicious. Uh, one you've probably heard about a lot is Pinterest. One I use is called Scoop It. So there are hundreds of these web curation tools out there. And if you refer to my blog, you can see several of them here. What I'm going to talk to you today about is using Pinterest. And I find that Pinterest has a couple of different uses in the classroom. The first is, as I mentioned, you can use Pinterest to collect resources. You can go online and collect resources, put them in a nice visual layout and a nice format that you, your peers, or your professors can then refer to, see a quick thumbnail, read a little bit about them, and then link right to the actual resource. Uh, the other way to use that, and a little more innovative way of using it, is to use them to actually do a presentation, to do a report in class. And you can use them to collect all of the resources and then refer to them. You could actually turn it in as a paper. You can use the annotation section of that of the resource of Pinterest to write a brief description of each resource and then you could just click on them to display them. So you could use it as a presentation tool, you could use it as a, a tool for handing in an actual uh, paper, a research piece for a professor. So here is how to use Pinterest. If you go and type in Pinterest.com, P-I-N-T-E-R-E-S-T.com, if you don't already have an account, you're going to come up to a page that asks you to request an invitation. Go ahead and do that, and when you get your email, you can go ahead and create your account. I already have an account, so I'm going to log in, and it allows you to log in with Facebook or Twitter so you can share your pins instantly and automatically with everyone who follows you on those two sites. What comes up first is a, a page that shows you all the things that people who you follow uh, have pinned recently. What you want to do though first is look at your boards if you have any and I'll show you my boards. So I've got one on educational technology, one on Boston sports, one on my favorite places and spaces, one on using Pinterest for students, one on computer games and learning, and one on my writing for online universities. So what you can do if you want to add a new board is go to add click that and you'll get this window. You can add a pin. You can upload a pin. That's something on your computer that you have stored. Or you can create a new board. I'm going to create a new board and let's call it um, using Pinterest in the classroom. I'm going to select the category of education for that one. I could add another pinner if I wanted to. If I wanted to make this a group curated pin. So if I had a collaborator in my class and I wanted to add, allow that person to share resources as well, I could do that. I'm just going to create a board now. And then you get this blank board. So what you can do first is edit that board and give it a description. This is going to help people find it. So this is a collection of resources designed to help students use Pinterest in their studies. And hit save settings and now that description is saved. So once you've got that done, you want to add to it. So you're going to either add a pin, which is a URL. You're going to upload a pin, which is a resource you have saved, created on your computer. It can be a PDF, it can be a graphic, uh, it could be a video. You can upload those pins or you can create a new board. So we're going to add a pin. So let's go to Pinterest. I'm going to search for, actually I'm going to search for a Pinterest in education. Let's see what I come up with quickly. And I come up with a nifty infographic from my own website. How handy is that? So I'm going to, and I'm going to click on my little pin it button. That allows me to pin this just by pressing a button in my browser bookmark bar. Infographic on the uses of Pinterest in education. Pin it. 
using pictures for students. And I can go look at that pin and it shows up in my pin board. I can go and look at it as an overview. There it is. Actually, I have two things in that pin board in addition to that. And so there it is. And now if I want to go see the original, I click on it and it goes right to the original. Okay, so now the other thing that I was going to show you was how to add a pin bar. So when you're at your main page, you go to About, Pin It button. You can scroll up here. And all you need to do if you have your browser bookmark bar open, grab this little icon and drag it and drop it right in your browser icon in your browser bar. What that allows you to do is just push this button. There we go. And it comes up to this little web page that allows you to pin it. Give it a description, pin it, and it goes to your site. Okay, you can tweet it out from there. That is the basics of how to use Pinterest. So you can go back to your boards, look at your boards, and collect that information, use it there, share it with other students, give it to your professor as a report, use it to do a presentation in the classroom. All those things are kept right there in your browser window so you can see them anytime you want.